Wella, wella raga, buongiorno ragazzi, come state? Spero bene. Eccoci qua, come sempre, in diretta. E questa è la prima puntata della mia serie The Italian American Series, in cui parliamo prima in italiano, poi in inglese, dove ripeterò tutte le cose che, che vi dico in italiano, e dove trattiamo delle cose italoamericane, perché è un argomento che mi interessa tantissimo, è una cosa che vivo, e quindi mi fa molto piacere condividere questa mia esperienza con voi, con voi che parlate italiano, con voi che parlate inglese, cioè con tutti. Quindi fatemi sapere se riuscite a sentirmi e a vedermi bene. Io voglio solo aggiustare un po' la webcam così. Come vedete, come sempre, io ho my merch. Se ne volete anche voi una tazza, una una camicia, un t-shirt, ci sono i link in descrizione. O potete andare anche a wellathon.com. Quindi, per non sprecare più tempo, dai, iniziamo con un po' della mia infanzia. Com'era crescere italo-americano? Allora, innanzitutto è importante notare come ho notato eh, nel, nel video presentazione di questa serie. È impossibile per me parlare di tutti, di ogni americano di eh, origine italiana. Io posso solamente parlare della mia esperienza, ma se avete delle domande, se volete ulteriori informazioni, se c'è una cosa che volete che volete che vi spiegassi in un'altra puntata di questa serie fatemi sapere o nella chat come sempre io devo guardare qui ma è il contrario è il rovescio per voi lasciate un commento qui nella chat se guardate in diretta o potete lasciare un commento nella sezione per i commenti sotto di questo video quindi eh, vi parlo un po' della mia infanzia, com'era crescere italo-americano, che, che vuol dire per me, cosa voleva dire e quindi com'era la mia esperienza. Allora, innanzitutto vi posso dire che da bimbo non sapevo di essere italiano. Quando dico italiano uso questo termine nel senso americano, che in America, almeno quando ero piccolo, non succede mai più solo poche volte, eh, una persona ti dice what are you? Quando ero piccolo anche dicevano what's your nationality? Che non non ha senso, entrambe le domande non hanno senso in realtà, però si impara come rispondere e io dovevo sempre rispondere I'm Italian, sono italiano e questo significa nel parlato americano, se vogliamo, nella lingua americana, solo per uh, purposes of this video, uso questo termine, solo per motivi di questo video, per fare questa spiegazione, significa sono di origine italiana, sono di origini italiane, ok? Significa solo questo. Non significa che io sono letteralmente e veramente nato e cresciuto in Italia. Cioè, poi a volte si dice, oh, you're Italian, Italian, like you're from Italy. A volte poi um, diamo più dettagli, ripetiamo la parola, no? Se una persona veramente è italiana in questo senso. Però, cioè, voglio dire che ho imparato subito da piccolo come dire I'm Italian, perché è la mia, um, um, my heritage è la parola in inglese, le mie origini. Però non sapevo cosa volesse dire, era solo un termine perché sapevo i miei nonni erano italiani, quindi fa parte della mia famiglia in un certo senso. Però vi posso dire che crescendo qui negli Stati Uniti, particolarmente nel nord-est, dove c'è una grande quantità di altre persone come me che vengono di famiglie italiane, era normalissimo vedere altri ragazzi della mia età, della mia classe, della mia scuola, eh, dei, delle mie squadre di calcio, o baseball, tutte queste cose. Quasi ognuno aveva o uno eh, dei due genitori, o entrambi i genitori, o i nonni italiani. Quindi era normalissimo, era normalissimo. Se io andavo, eh, ad esempio, se io ehm, quando andavo, meglio dire, dai miei amici per giocare insieme, per fare un play date, si dice in inglese, per giocare insieme, passare del tempo insieme, se veniva, ad esempio, se venisse il nonno o la nonna 
mi salutava in italiano, cioè era normale, quindi non era mai una cosa a cui pensavo. Io, anzi, per un periodo di tempo eh, credevo che ogni anziano parlava italiano, che erano tutti così, era normale. Però poi ho capito che ci sono altri ragazzi della mia classe che hanno i nonni, non lo so, turchi, grechi, polacchi, francesi, eh, di qualsiasi paese di, eh, di um, Sud America, quindi parlavano spagnolo. Cioè, era una cosa molto presente, quindi io capivo che gli anziani parlassero altre lingue. Non solamente succede così, succede così. Poi mi ricordo quando avevo tipo, non lo so, nove anni, ho fatto un progetto, eh, ho dato un discorso in una delle mie lezioni, perché era necessario, ogni studente doveva fare così, e l'obiettivo eh, del progetto era di parlare delle proprie origini. E quindi ovviamente sono dovuto andare da mia mamma per chiedere a mamma, non so che significa questa parola heritage, mi puoi aiutare? E lei subito mi ha detto, ah ma sì, ma tu sei italiano, la tua famiglia viene dall'Italia, quindi è facile preparare eh, questo tuo piccolo tema, no? <ride> questo tuo piccolo progetto. E mi ricordo che ero lì davanti alla classe quando era, era il mio turno, ho avuto la coppia del mio essay, cioè per usare la parola in inglese, per la cosa che ho scritto c'era una piccola bandiera italiana lì di fronte e ho detto my family comes from Italy, we are Italian. E anche quando dicevo tutto quello non ho capito un cavolo, non ho capito niente perché non avevo senso, avevo nove anni, non potevo nemmeno dire sulla mappa dove si trovava l'Italia, cioè non aveva, non aveva avuto senso, ma ho saputo che era questa la risposta, perché così mi hanno detto. E poi ci sono sempre i ragazzi nella, nella, nella scuola che sono anche di origini eh, italiane e c'è chi è molto più eh, legato all'identità italiana e particolarmente l'identità italo-americana. Come vi ho detto eh, all'inizio di questo video, a volte dirò delle cose che sono italiane, ma intendo italo-americane. Quindi se sbaglio, perdonatemi, è solo che siamo abituati a parlare così in America, no? Usiamo questa parola. Anche se è errata, diciamo, non è corretta in questo contesto. Comunque, ci sono i ragazzi, o c'erano i ragazzi che erano molto più legati alle loro ehm, radici, alle loro origini, e quindi si, si dimostravano un po' di più, no? Dicevano con più orgoglio, io sono italiano, questo perché faccio una cosa così, no? O a casa mia non si può fare così perché ho oh, il padre italiano, non si comporta come voi altri americani, no? E una, una roba un po' così, questo è un po' esagerato, però mi ricordo c'era <ride> un ragazzo che si comportava un po' così, e poi ehm, c'erano altri che, un po' come me, che non si accorgevano di queste cose. Era solo un, una, un fatto di vita, se si può dire, a fact of life, era semplicemente normale. Quindi non è che ci ho fatto caso, non è che ci volevo fare caso perché non ha avuto senso. Da quanto io avevo capito in, in quei tempi, da quanto io capisse, Capissi, si deve dire? Non lo so, sto usando dei... Perché sto parlando del passato? Un po' interessante se devo usare il congiuntivo o no. Comunque, non è il punto di questo video. E io voglio concludere tra poco per fare la traduzione in inglese, così non faccio un video super lungo. Però vediamo, è un argomento importante, no? E tanto se avete delle domande fatemi sapere, perché io posso espandere un po' di più. I can expand more su queste cose. Comunque, mi ricordo c'erano altri ragazzi come me che semplicemente era un fatto di vita, cioè quando andavo dai miei nonni mi parlavano in un misto tra lingua, eh, lingua regionale, cioè dialetto, eh, italiano standard e anche inglese. Era normale, era normale. Era normale avere parenti che venivano qui per dare una visita e loro parlavano italiano, quindi ho dovuto parlare un po', anche poche parole perché non ho studiato la lingua, era normale andare la domenica dai miei nonni eh, alla tv, c'era un canale che solo per la domenica, questo era prima di avere internet e eh, televisione come Sky in Italia, no? In inglese in America si chiama cable television, cioè con tutti i canali, no? E cioè solo c'erano i canali locali della tua zona. 
ogni domenica perché si sapeva che c'è una grande comunità italiana qui nel nord-est degli Stati Uniti. C'era la TG1, c'era il calcio, c'era il Rai internazionale, però solo per domenica. Quindi mi ricordo guardare la TG1 alla casa dei miei nonni, anche se non ho capito niente, c'era lì e non era strano. Quindi quando una cosa è normale, non solo nella tua famiglia, ma nella tua comunità, nella tua scuola, non è che ci pensi mai, perché è così la vita, no? Solo che quando poi vivi la vita e poi fai quel progetto quando hai nove anni e l'insegnante ti dice ora studiamo um, heritage, quindi parliamo delle origini e quindi ora si capisce che c'è un nome per questa caratteristica normale della tua vita. Quindi poi si capisce. Poi quando i ragazzi ti fanno queste domande e tu dici ma che significa what are you, what's your nationality? Io sono americano, vivo in America, cosa dite? E poi si capisce, no, no, sappiamo che sei americano, ma veramente che cosa sei? Così fanno i bimbi, Al almeno negli anni 90 quando io eh, andavo al alla scuola elementare o alle elementari. Quindi era così. E poi ti ra vi racconto un'altra storia e poi smetto di parlare in italiano così vi parlo un po' in inglese. E se voglio aggiungere qualcosa, se avete delle domande, fatemi sapere eh, per chi guarda in diretta, ma anche per chi guarda la registrazione, potete lasciare dei commenti sotto in descrizione. Io posso approfondire, ecco la parola un po' meglio, non credo espandere sia un termine in italiano, almeno in questo contesto, no? Io posso approfondire su uno di questi punti. Poi bevo un po' di tè perché ho appena fatto una tazza e credo che sia ancora calda. Vediamo. Temperatura perfetta, ragazzi. Temperatura perfetta. Comunque, stavo dicendo che sì, per me era una vita normale perché sembrava che ognuno era anche così. Quindi non c'era la necessità di pensare «Uh, io vivo una vita italiana, italo-americana, ok?» Non era niente. Quindi, ora voglio raccontarvi una storia di quando ero un pochettino più grande, solo due anni in futuro, quando avevo tipo no, uh, 11 anni, e c'era un altro progetto da fare a scuola. E quindi, questo progetto era un progetto di diversi paesi. Quindi, il, il motivo era di studiare un paese e poi quel studente... Uh, quello studente um, facesse un grande uh, poster board, si chiama, cioè è una cosa che si può mettere sui piedi, no? Sul tavolo e ci sono tre cose, un po' così, no? Quindi si apre così, ci sono tre, tre carte, non so come spiegarlo in italiano, ma si chiama un poster board e quindi tu metti degli, uh, delle immagini, le foto, le cose scritte, non lo so. Tu Vuoi eh, parlare, tu devi parlare di un paese. E poi mi ricordo che ogni studente aveva un paese in particolare e poi si andava nella mensa così i genitori possono venire per vedere i nostri progetti, per fare delle domande, gli altri studenti di altri, um, altre classi venivano per vedere ciò che abbiamo fatto. E mi ricordo durante il processo di scegliere un paese c'era questo mio compagno di classe, anche un mio amico, che era sempre questo ragazzo molto fiero di essere italiano, no? Lui aveva questa appartenenza veramente forte, che io, come vi ho detto, non è esattamente che l'ho capito, perché per me, quando poi ho capito che non tutti gli anziani parlano italiano o altre lingue, esistono anche nonni americani, no? Tra virgolette. Ehm... Um, che parlano inglese, che hanno fatto le scuole come te qua in America, no? Um, io ho sempre pensato che, beh, l'italianità, questa, questa idea, le cose italiane, innanzitutto è una cosa normale, e seconda cosa, è una cosa che appartiene alla famiglia, i miei nonni sono italiani, però io sono americano, quindi anche se fa parte della mia vita, le nostre tradizioni, io capisco un po' la lingua regionale, un po' l'italiano standard, io posso anche parlare un pochettino, anche, non, anche se non era molto, era una cosa normale, quindi niente di che, quindi era una cosa che apparteneva ai miei nonni e alla mia famiglia, quindi ok. Però questo ragazzo aveva un forte senso di, di italianità, di italo-americanità. E quindi mi ricordo che lui voleva tanto fare il progetto sull'Italia. Quindi mi ricordo che subito lui ha detto, io so quale paese... 
eh, di cui voglio studiare l'Italia e poi mi ricordo che non so perché ma lui perché eravamo amici mi ha parlato ma tu non vuoi fare l'Italia? cioè io non ho competizione io posso scegliere questo paese e nessun altro lo vuole e io ho detto ma eh, c'è caro mio se tu vuoi fare il progetto sull'Italia vai pure vai pure perché pensi che io voglio eh, scegliere l'Italia e mi ha detto ma perché tu sei italiano e ha detto sì ho capito ma c'è quindi lui ha ha fatto l'Italia e mi ricordo che lui si è vestito con la maglia azzurra eh, con tutto tutto l'abito se si dice così the whole outfit lui era tutto così aveva messo le lire perché in quei tempi c'era ancora la lira ha messo le lire che lui ha preso dall'Italia dai parenti eh, sul suo postboard eh, postboard? non mi ricordo nemmeno come si dice in italiano postboard penso si dice non mi ricordo sulla cartone eh? lui ha messo le lire e lui ha parlato in italiano ha parlato della pasta della pizza di tutte queste cose no? anche di Maradona se non sbaglio perché lui era un grande fan di calcio e io ho scelto (ride) l'Australia ho avuto la possibilità di scegliere un paese ho scelto l'Australia e come mai? perché mi piaceva l'accento perché come vedete io sono sempre stato curioso eh, e interessato agli accenti le pronunce, l'inglese anche l'italiano ma per me non era che l'Italia era una cosa che, che mi affascinava tanto perché mi sembrava normale non è che mi sono sentito il bisogno di dover scoprirne di più e che ho già saputo tutto e lo, al, almeno mi sono sentito così anche se non ho saputo tutto e quindi io ho scelto l'Australia un paese diverso io ho fatto la mia presentazione con un accento australiano e era per questo che tutti volevano venire da me mi ricordo avevo tipo eh, questa grande au- questo grande audience davanti a me di ragazzi della classe um, the year below us diciamo l'anno di meno di noi cioè avevano un anno di meno di noi a scuola quindi io ero nella sesta uh, elementare o in prima media e loro erano del, del quinto uh, elementare uh, non so come funziona, non mi ricordo però in America dipende dalla tua scuola o la scuola media inizia al sesto anno o al quinto quindi nella mia scuola non ci faceva caso quindi il punto è ognuno voleva venire da me perché io dicevo hey, good eye, mate we're talking about Australia here e io parlavo così perché mi interessava, mi, mi ha interessato. E quindi mi ricordo c'era quel ragazzo dall'altro lato sempre parlando italiano, queste cose qui, no? Quindi, quindi in sostanza era così. Crescere italo-americano per me semplicemente era la vita normale, ma ora che ho potuto riflettere sulla mia infanzia, perché volevo preparare per fare questa serie, ho parlato con molti altri, molte altre persone che hanno vissuto delle stesse cose, ho imparato che sì, la mia infanzia infatti era molto italo-americana, perché c'era sempre questa presenza della cultura itala- italiana in un senso. E un'altra cosa che vorrei aggiungere prima di cambiare a parlare in inglese, per ripetere tutto ciò che vi ho detto oggi voglio dire che penso di averlo già menzionato però eh, non mi ricordo bene dato che stavo parlando di questo mio ricordo di infanzia quando avevo 11 anni era normale che un parente dall'Italia veniva a trovarci quindi io ero sempre ah sì, questo già l'ho menzionato mi ricordo adesso Era normale vedere questo, quindi noi abbiamo avuto sempre contatto con l'Italia, di ogni parte della mia mia famiglia, perché tutti e quattro dei miei nonni sono italiani. Quindi o c'era un cugino, non lo so, della parte della famiglia di mio nonno paterno o della nonna materna, cioè la famiglia è grande così e voi sapete benissimo che in passato le famiglie avevano molti figli quindi come molti italiani e molti italo-americani io vengo da una famiglia molto grande e quindi quando si sa che c'è un parente in America no, non lo so, chissà forse un parente dall'Italia vuole venire a trovarci anche se non è un parente che che conosciamo bene eh? però anche poi in quei giorni dovete capire che dato che i miei nonni erano i primi di, di emigrare di venire in America 
ovviamente loro avevano contatto ancora con i fratelli che non sono venuti o con i fratelli che sono andati altrove, perché ho famiglie che vive anche in altri paesi, perché gli italiani sono andati dappertutto, non solo l'America, come nel mio caso. Eh, nel mio caso diretto, voglio dire, perché ho cugini che vengono di vari paesi, però sono, eh, di, origini, eh, ita- sono di origine italiana alla fine. Quindi l'italianità era sempre presente, abbiamo mangiato la pasta, abbiamo parlato un po' in italiano, in lingua originale, eh, io voglio sempre dire lingua originale, lingua regionale, si vede che parlo spesso con chi vuole guardare i film, io do consigli, ah, è importante guardare un film in lingua originale, <ride> quindi sono molto abituato a parlare così. Eh, comunque sì, era normale, ma... Tutto è cambiato quando sono andato al liceo e nella seconda puntata di questa serie parliamo di quando ero adolescente, cioè quando ero teenager, da 13 anni in più, quando molte cose sono cambiate e era un periodo veramente bellissimo della mia vita e quindi non vedo l'ora di condividere questa mia esperienza con voi. Quindi se avete delle domande, perché sto per ripetere tutto ciò che vi ho appena detto in inglese, se avete delle domande su questa mia esperienza della infanzia, se volete ulteriori informazioni, sarei felice di condividere più cose con voi nella nella prossima puntata o nelle prossime puntate se c'è un'altra eh, un'altra cosa che di cui vogliamo approfondire o oh, se, se volete anche voi condividere le vostre esperienze magari anche voi siete italoamericani o magari anche voi eh, non solo siete italiani ma avete i genitori di un'altra parte dell'Italia quindi forse adesso vivete a Venezia ma siete originalmente delle Marche e quindi voi avete questa appartenenza alla vita delle Marche quindi Fatemi sapere com'è per voi, perché questa è una conversazione per noi tutti e quindi io voglio anche imparare da voi perché non è che ho capito tutto di questa esperienza, perché come vi ho detto per un gran parte della mia vita essere italiano, italoamericano, era una cosa normale, quindi non è che ho notato che c'erano queste cose che forse erano speciali, tra virgolette, no? Che non, erano, che non era l'infanzia classica americana. Anche se era un'infanzia americana, sono andato alle scuole in America, ho parlato sempre inglese, cioè sì, era un'infanzia americana, non era mica un'infanzia italiana in Italia, però c'era un grande influenza, un'influenza grande dell'Italia, eh, perché questa italianità era forte. Però è perché vengo dal nord-est degli Stati Uniti, dove qui c'è una grande concentrazione di italiani e di discendenti di migranti italiani. Quindi Quindi sì, vi parlerò della mia esperienza di liceo che era magnifico. E e quindi sì, bevo un po' di tè adesso e poi eh, parliamo in inglese. Dai ragazzi, così facciamo un esercizio dell'ascolto. E quindi sì, quindi sì. Allora, vediamo un po' di te, ma nel frattempo, quelli che guardate in diretta, come state? Che fate di bello oggi? Mi sentite bene? Ho sbagliato enormemente con l'italiano o andiamo alla grande, eh? Andiamo bene? Almeno spero, dai ragazzi, spero. A volte sapete com'è, quando si parla di un argomento che di solito non si parla mai, è difficile trovare i vocaboli, però sempre c'è chi mi fa la domanda, ma come si può non essere bloccato o come si può imparare nuovi vocaboli e poi ricordarseli, se si dice così, e poi ricordarli. Io dico sempre, semplicemente, che bisogna sforzarti, bisogna metterti nelle situazioni in cui si deve usare nuovi vocaboli o usare i vocaboli nuovi che hai appena imparato, così cogli l'attimo, no? Cogli ogni situazione. E quindi per me questa è una nuova esperienza, non è che parlo spesso della vita italoamericana in italiano, quindi questo è un ottimo esercizio per me di esercitarmi in italiano, di approfondire quello che già so e di imparare nuovi vocaboli. Quindi se ci sono dei vocaboli migliori per spiegare ciò che ho detto oggi, fatemi sapere, lasciate un commento. Anche io leggo eh, i direct di Instagram, quindi sono a Wellatom su Instagram. Non è che posso sempre rispondere, perché i messaggi arrivano in tanti, però cerco di leggere quando ho due minuti liberi. Molto bene. Il tè adesso non è più caldo, però ci sta. Abbiamo cose importanti da cui parlare. 
Uno ha detto il tuo accento ultimamente sembra più veneto. E infatti io noto, lo noto pure, perché dipende con chi parlo, io prendo quell'accento e ultimamente sto parlando con molti italiani dal nord, quindi io ho preso un po' della loro pronuncia. Comunque, siete pronti per la parte in inglese? Dai ragazzi, facciamo la grande traduzione di tutto ciò che vi ho appena detto, ok? E se avete ancora altre domande, fatemi sapere. All right, guys, so... If you are watching this video in the future, the recording of this live stream, I'm going to put a timestamp when uh, the English part begins, so around the 25th minute. That way, if you wanted to use this video as a tool for listening comprehension, let's say you wanted you're learning English, you want to hear the English part first and then watch the part in Italian, you could skip right here to the half point of the video, the 25th minute. And then uh, you can hear the whole thing in English first and then go back and see the part in Italian. So for those of you just coming to this part in the future um, now, or for those of you watching live, voila, welcome. How's it going, guys? Welcome to the first episode in my series, the Italian American series. This series has been a long time coming. I love talking about these kinds of things. And it's a real pleasure for me to finally take the time to share things about my lived experience Uh, as an Italian-American, as an American of Italian descent. And I'm really looking forward to sharing more things and exploring other topics of this whole idea of Italian-American in future videos in this series. So please let me know either in the chat if you're watching live or down below in the comments section if you're watching later. Let me know if there's any things in particular that you'd like me to touch on. And please feel free to share your experiences with me if you want to share what your experience has been like as an Italian-American or as, as anything, really. You could be an Italian, like I said just a few moments ago, who lives in Venice, but your family is originally from Le Marche. And so you have this strong sense of belonging to your, um, I don't know what we would call it in English, Marken identity. You know what I mean? So... I, I get it, you know, or it could be anything else. You could think of anything else. You could be originally from New York, but moved to Texas. And so you got a strong sense of being a New Yorker, you know, share it with me. And, and, and if you'd like to not leave a comment, you can always message me on Instagram. I do my best to read my, my DMs. Doesn't mean I always get the chance to respond because a lot of messages tend to come through. But when I have two free minutes, I do try to go through it and, and read some of the messages that come in. But yeah, please, I'd, I'd love this to be an open conversation for all of us. And I'm still learning about this stuff. You know what I mean? This is like I'm going to share with you guys because we're going to touch on my childhood in particular and some aspects of that. It's not like it's really something I ever thought that much about because it was so normal. So only as I've taken time now as an adult to reflect because I want to share these things. And I've been learning things as time has gone on. I've been talking to people. I've been understanding Oh, you guys did that too? You know what I mean? Or or even if you see something as simple as like a reel on Instagram and it's like from all of these now prominent, you know, Italian American um, uh, pages or accounts. And sometimes they share things and you're like, wow, I didn't, I didn't know this was like a thing. I didn't know everybody did this. And so then I go and have conversations with people because I'm trying to distinguish like, is this more of a caricature that I saw online? Is this more of an exaggerated thing? Because um, sometimes it, it does appear that way and other times it's spot on. And so I, I want to know from other people, like, what's your experience been? So that's sort of where all of this is, is born from. And in the other place that this idea is born from, or was born from rather, is that I've had so many conversations with Italians over the years. And I, I recognize that there is a big interest in understanding whatever happened to those Italians that left and went in other countries. Whatever happened to their descendants? Like, what was their experience like? Did they totally forget everything about Italy and just become American or become German or become Argentinian? Or did they retain things? And then it's just, it's a really fascinating conversation. And everyone's got a different got a different um, uh, curiosity, something that, that that is curious to them. So yeah, so that's kind of like where this all came from. So let's jump right into it. I don't want to have a huge intro. Uh, basically, let's talk a little bit about my childhood, which in Italian we can call infancia. It's like infancy, basically, is what it literally is. But childhood is what we're talking about. So simply put, I never knew that I was Italian. And I'm going to be saying Italian in quotes because I'm basically using the word Italian synonymously with Italian-American because obviously we know there's a difference from someone who's Italian and someone who's Italian-American who's had an American experience versus one in Italy. 
but what I want to do is sort of use the American terminology, like what, how we normally talk about this um, and how I've, I've heard it in my experience. And that is to call someone Italian. So the first thing it kind of begins with is when I was a child, I remember being in school and on occasion, this was in the nineties, maybe things have changed. I don't know what it's like in elementary school today. Now we've got social media. People are more informed on these things. Who knows what it's like today? Uh, but when I was in school, I remember kids would ask the question, what are you? Or they would say, what's your nationality? And I remember like my simple response was, what do you mean? What are you uh, like? What does that mean? And what's your nationality? I'm American. Why is that even a question? And people would be like, no, we know you're American, but like, what really are you? And I learned because I had to find out what this meant. Either they told me or I learned from other people that I was Italian. I had no idea what that meant, okay? I was very much under the impression that all elderly people spoke Italian. And if they didn't speak Italian, they spoke some other language, okay? Uh, just because that was normal. You know, I'm from the Northeast of the US where we have received a large number of immigrants basically throughout our entire history, because still to this day we do. And so it's it was very normal for me growing up to be around people that had either parents or grandparents that spoke some other language or came from some other country. So when something is normal and is, and is not only common in your life, but is common in everyone else's life around you, that's normal. So you're not questioning it. You know what I mean? You don't question things that are normal and just as a matter of fact, right? They're just facts of life. And so even not only in my family, because all of my grandparents are from Italy, all four of them. And so in my family, we definitely have an Italian American way about us. That's our lived experience, you know? And it's influenced by many things. It's influenced by our own traditions, our own lived experience. And it's also influenced by our community, you know? One of the, I didn't say this in Italian, but such a cool thing that has happened over the years. I'm pretty sure it continues to happen if someone looked into it. When large group of immigrants would move somewhere, they would settle in a community with other of their um, we say compaisani in Italian, compatriots, can we say that? They're other fellow countrymen, that would be the term in English. Compaisani would be countrymen. So um, it's, you know, there are so many Italian communities here and I grew up around so many other people like me. So for me, I remember being in school, if I would go for a play date at someone's house and their grandparent would come over, they'd speak to me in Italian. And in many circumstances, even if you didn't come from an Italian family, they'd talk to you in Italian anyway. So it was just kind of normal. So you don't think anything of it. Um, we would eat Italian food. Uh, in my family, we would speak a combination of three languages. We would speak Italian, the standard language. We would speak our regional language or dialect, and we would speak English. So even though I wasn't conversational as a young child, it was very normal for me to have to say a few words, particularly when family came and visited. It was very common throughout my entire childhood to have family visiting from Italy. And even from other countries, because Italians have gone elsewhere, and I have family that lives in various other countries around the world, but they're all originally uh, Italian. And so it was always normal to have these people around me and to have to say something in Italian. You know, as a kid, when an, when, when an adult is coming, you're not necessarily sitting around the table with them talking. You're, you're off playing, doing something else. So the, the, the extent of what I'd have to say is grazie. If I would take a photo, I learned how to say Tre, due, uno, or uno, due, tre, you know, sorridi. Like you learn little things like that. You learn how to say fatto, va bene. You know, you learn little stuff like that. So that was really the, what it was like for me. So we always had contact with Italy. So this idea of Italian and Italian stuff, it never really felt um, foreign. Yet again, it was normal. So I remember that was one experience in school when kids would ask you that question. You know, it's always other kids trying to bring up these questions and corrupt the corrupt the pure kids. <laughs> I'm just saying that's a joke. But it's like there's always these kids at school. They're trying to put ideas in your head. I'm like, why are you making this a thing? But anyway, I then remember there was a school project when I was about nine in one of my classes. And I just want to take a sip of tea because it's getting cold. I want to make sure I enjoy it, but I hope you guys are enjoying a nice cup of tea or a glass of water or something good, cup of coffee, a nice espresso, un café. Eh? Do you guys like singolo or doppio? For me, it depends on my mood. A single shot or double shot of espresso. Depends on my mood. So um, let me know in the comments. But anyway, um, so I remember we had this project when I was about nine years old, and the point of the project was to talk about your heritage. It was a heritage project. 
And so I had no idea what the word heritage meant. So obviously I had to go home and I asked my mom, hey, mom, what does is, what is heritage mean? What is this project? How do I do it? And I remember it was really easy for her to respond. She was like, oh, well, you're Italian. We're from Italy. That's easy. Your family's from Italy. She didn't say we're from Italy. Your family's from Italy. And I was like, okay. I had no idea what that meant. I had no idea what Italian meant. I was nine. You know what I mean? I wasn't like thinking about these things. And so basically part of my experience was when things are so normal for you, you're never questioning them. And so it's only when sort of like society starts like sort of showing you that these labels exist, that's when you suddenly start to uh, be aware of them. And one of the things that I may like to touch on if you guys are interested is sort of this idea of sometimes when these labels exist, you sometimes feel like you have to be a certain way to fit that label. I think that would be a really interesting thing to touch on. Maybe when we talk about my high school video, which I'll do most likely in part two, I'm going to talk about my experience in high school because it was a really beautiful, beautiful point in my life. I think that might be a really fun time to talk about how you sort of felt like, at least in my experience, that in a way you had to be very Italian American, that that was sort of like what you were supposed to do. So that I think would be a really interesting thing to touch on. But anyway, so I learned that I was Italian and I remember I stood up in front of the class and I had my little report cover. Do, did any of you guys have those report covers when you would make like an essay and you would have like this little plastic thing that would bind the pages together. So you slip it on and you also have that clear like, um, what's it called? Cellophane cover, you know? And so like you slip it on, you've got like a nice little report cover. At least that's what I did back in the 90s. So I remember standing up in front of the classroom and had a little Italian flag in front of it, you know? And I remember saying, my heritage is Italian. My family is Italian. My grandparents are from Italy. And even as I said that, I remember not, not getting it. I'm like, what does this mean? I thought I was American. I thought I lived in America. What is this? But I really didn't make a big deal over it. But I do remember that there were uh, like kids in my class or, or kids that I was on a sports team with or whatever. All of them, many of them were of Italian descent. And if they weren't, they were Polish or Turkish or Greek or they had family from uh, South America. Like there was always somebody had um, some sort of, you know, ethnic origins, right? Some sort of heritage. And so um, I remember that there, there were always like those kids, depended when they were all on a different part of the spectrum is what I'm trying to say. So you have some kids that were like to the far end where they had a very strong sense of their Ita Italian identity. They had a real strong sense of that Italianita or Italo-Americanita. And they were very proud of it and they really told you about it. You know, they would say things like, you know, I can't do that stuff. I've got an Italian father. That wouldn't fly with him. Or we're Italian. We do this on Sundays. Like very, very, very proud and in tune with, with his uh, culture, with his heritage. And then there were other people on the spectrum that I feel were kind of like me, where because it was so normal, sometimes you would look at a person like that and you'd be like, why are you so like enthralled by this? Why are you making it such a thing? Okay, you speak Italian. Like, yeah, I know my family speaks Italian too. Like, and... You know, so it wasn't really anything of much like allure. It was something very much tied to my family and my grandparents. And I learned that they were from this place called Italy, even though I couldn't find it on a map at that age. Yet again, normal, right? So then um, uh, there, I, I'll talk now before I get into the sixth grade project when I was like 11 years old. I'll talk about how, you know, as I was reflecting and preparing on this series, I've been talking to a lot of people, a lot of family, a lot of friends, a lot of students, everybody. And I've been sort of asking these questions like, so what has your experience been like? Was this like this for you too? Like, did you live this experience as well? Did you have this experience? And, um, you know, I thought back to me as a child, I would spend Sundays at my grandparents' house too, but it, sometimes it wasn't always Sunday. Maybe we'd go there on a Thursday night. Like Sunday wasn't like a, a thing. Like sometimes people, I didn't say this Italian, but sometimes people will say to you, oh, do you guys do like the Sunday dinner or the Sunday lunch? You know, and I'm like, well, yes. I mean, we, we've done that. We don't do it every Sunday, you know? I'm just kind of like, yeah, so what? It's a family day. Everyone's off from work. So we go spend time with my grandparents. Yeah. All right. I didn't know it was like a thing. I didn't know it had to be an Italian thing, you know? So not that I have a problem with it. I'm just saying like I was, I'm the sort of person that I don't usually make a big deal over things. I just kind of like, okay, whatever. And I go on my way. And I notice there's always a lot of people that make everything a thing. And I'm like, it's not always a thing. 
but that's a different discussion. <laughs> so anyway, I remember being at my grandparents' houses and yeah, we'd have pasta. We'd be speaking in English, Italian or whatever. Um, we'd have family visiting from Italy. Like I said, we'd have dinner with them and stuff. Uh, we'd show them around, you know, whatever. Uh, on TV, we actually had, so prior to cable, we actually had on public television um, on one of the channels, they would show on Sundays, Rai Internazionale. Now it's an actual channel you can order uh, as a part of your cable service, you know, whatever. But prior to having cable, I guess, I really would love to speak to someone who worked at the network to find out how they did this. But in, in this part of the U.S., at least in the Northeast, in some parts, uh, on Sundays, you could get Italian television for free. It was just shown. OK. And I remember, you know, seeing my grandpa sitting in front of the TV and I'd be there also. And TG Uno would come on, which is one of the Rai Telegiornale. It's one of the news channels in, in, in Italy. And we'd hear the news in Italy. There'd be a soccer game that'd be on with the Italian, you know, uh, sportscasters. So it's all in Italian. And then there'd be like a, a Rai film, you know, and you'd watch the film and like. It was very normal. And then after a certain hour, it'd go off. And then there'd be like cooking shows with Lydia Bastianich. Uh, a lot of people may know her in Italy because of her son, Joe Bastianich, who's been very uh, famous in MasterChef and stuff like that. But I always knew of his mother because she would cook Italian food on public television. And she was like this symbol of Italian food, right? In America. And she'd cook like us. So it would be dishes that my family would make. You know, we'd learn her recipes, whatever. I also didn't say this in Italian. So if you... If you were looking for that part in the Italian part, I didn't say this, but this is what happens. It's the bella della diretta and the, and the beauty of talking about these things that uh, new things come up spontaneously. It's why I love live videos, you know? Everything's not always perfect and pristine. So anyway, um, looking back, I see that my childhood was very Italian. Yet again, Italian, Italian-American. I realize it was. And, um, and I love that about it, you know? I love that. I think it was really beautiful and it was enriched because of that. But I think that, um, so perhaps it wasn't the classic American childhood of someone in another state elsewhere, but it is something very similar to a lot of people I've spoken to that have similar family dynamics. Even people that are not of Italian descent. Like there are so many people, yet again, another thing I didn't say in Italian, but this could be another episode. We could talk about this. So often I'll watch a vlog on YouTube, right? And it'll be about a family that does not have Italian origins. They could be something very different. And their family dynamic is something that I completely can relate to. And I think what it really sort of comes down to is people that are interested in culture, people that have a strong sense of their heritage or just a particular identity of even where you're from. You could even be, I said this in Italian, you could be a New Yorker that moves to Texas, but you still maintain that New York attitude, you know? So your New York identity, you really feel. There's something that I can relate to in all of that uh, because it's all a similar experience. And so I think sometimes we sort of take that for, uh, we we undermine that. We, we don't, I want to say sotto valutare or teniamo per scontato are the words that are coming to mind in English, but in Italian. I don't want to say that we take it for granted. Maybe we do. Yeah, maybe we do. Tenere per scontato. We sort of take it for granted that maybe we think it's only people of our particular group or people that have lived that very similar experience. So like an Italian American one, we sort of think that only they have had something similar when, when really, when you look into other stuff, and this is one of the reasons, like always, why I love YouTube, you get a window into so many other worlds and mindsets and, and things, and you really see that there's so much crossover, so much. And I think at the, at the underlying place, it's this love and respect and connection to culture. And I think that's really sort of where, where it all lines up. But anyway, let's now talk about sixth grade. So when I was in the sixth grade, I was about 11 years old. And uh, so in fourth grade, we had the Heritage Project. And let me tell you, there were plenty of other things that happened in school that had to do with other languages. We were always doing something to talk about culture and languages and all that kind of stuff. It was, it was definitely a big part of my schooling. And I went to a regular school. It was nothing out of the ordinary. It wasn't a culture school. <laughs> it, was, it was just a school. So anyway, when I was in sixth grade, we then, I'm just pointing out these specific kind of milestones or hallmark things that sort of taught me something about this theme of Italian American and culture. So I remember being in, in the sixth grade, and at this time we were doing a country project where every student would either get assigned or if they so wanted, they could choose a country of their choice to talk about. And then we would all go in the cafeteria with our 
poster boards, you know, the ones that have like the three, the three panels, they kind of open up like that and they stand up on the table and you'd put pictures, you'd write stuff, you would, you know, oh, maybe dress a certain way if you wanted to wear traditional attire. Uh, maybe you'd bring food. Some people brought food. Maybe that classmate of mine that I'll tell you about, maybe he brought pasta. That, that could very well be something that happened. But anyway, um, you would display the country and then everyone from the different grades would come and visit. Parents were able to come and see. I'm sure many schools do this. We had like a country fair, basically. But it was just for our grade. Everyone in the sixth grade would do that each year. So I remember that there was this uh, friend of mine and this classmate of mine, uh, yet again, the one who was very strongly uh, tied to his Italian identity, to his Italian-American identity. And he chose Italy, like right out of the gate. He knew what country he wanted to talk about. And I remember we were having a conversation and he said to me, you don't want to choose Italy too? And I'm like, no, I, I want to choose Australia. <laughs> Like of all the countries, I choose Australia. And the purpose is I loved the accent. I wanted to practice the accent. I've always loved accents, always loved pronunciation. I've always been fascinated uh, in different places, including Australia. It's a place I've always wanted to visit. And so I'm like, that's what I want to do. And he was like, oh, great. I have no competition. I can't believe it. You're Italian and you don't want to choose Italy. I'm going to get Italy. And I'm like, okay, you're going to get Italy. Like, great. And I remember the the sort of impression that I had when I saw him, because I remember his board, he was wearing a whole, he was kitted out in Azzurri um, outfits. Who knows if there was a World Cup or Euro Cup that year? I'd have to go back and think what year that was. Maybe there was. But he had, I'm telling you, he had the cleats, you know, the soccer boots. He had, he was ready. He had his Azzurro thing on. He was talking about Maradona. Um, I think his squadra del cuore, his favorite team was Napoli. So he was talking all about Napoli. Um, and he had Lira, you know, because this is back when the Lira was still the currency. He had Lira up on the board. Like he was all in it. And I remember there I am with my like, welcome to Australia stuff. I'm speaking in an accent, telling everyone, I know it's very stereotypical, but I was 11. Okay. You can forgive me. I was all like, good eye, my welcome to Australia. This is my project and blah, blah, blah. I was talking about Olivia Newton-John. I was talking about the crocodile, uh, what was he called? Crocodile hunter. I was talking about like all these things, you know? Um, and everyone loved my project, especially I remember distinctly, there was this group of kids from the year below me. I had like a group of them, right? I had a group of them around me and they were just like speaking that accent again. Cause sometimes I would go out of it. I wouldn't, you know, do the whole project and they'd be like, do it again, do it again, do it again. And you know how it is. Probably the kids were probably part making fun of me. But honestly, I remember their faces. They looked like they were genuinely enjoying this. So I was enjoying it. And that's what matters. So, um, so yeah. So I was, um, I was doing that project. And so I remember thinking about that classmate's project talking about Italy. And I'm like, why are you so fascinated about something that's so normal? Like, yeah, I know I'm Italian. I know I'm of Italian background. But Italy felt like a thing connected to my family and to my grandparents. So yes, it's something a part of me, but I also recognized and felt very much American. So I wasn't really so enthralled and fascinated with Italy feeling that like I needed to learn more about it or needed to discover it because I sort of felt like I knew what I needed to know. And I knew, and I, looking back, even know this, I didn't know everything, of course not. But I sort of just felt comfortable in my understanding and I wasn't sort of like needing to make it a thing. So, um, so yeah. But um, one of the things that I really want to touch on, and I think this is pretty much everything I said in... Um, in, in, in Italian, but there are some other fun things that happened where like kids would be interested in different languages and would ask how to say things. And it's sort of, there was always this environment. I was really in the right place at the right time, I think. And I, I think I still am. I'm sort of in the right place in the right time. For someone like me that likes languages, I think being in such a diverse and multicultural place is sort of the ideal habitat for someone like me, because you can really explore all of these things really easily. It doesn't really take that much effort to get into different linguistic communities and um, and like learn more about them, you know? But that's another topic. We could talk about that too. I've spoken a little bit about this in my videos before. If you look at the one, it's a bilingual video, how I study Italian, come mi esercito in, Ita in italiano. I talk a little bit about this. So if you take a look at that video on my channel or just search it in, in YouTube, it'll come up. But uh, it's when it's really windy out. I'm in the park. I've got a scarf on. It's one of my favorite videos. I'm telling you, one of my favorite videos. So anyway, yeah, there, there were also instances where, you know, because people around me were interested, yet again, for me, it wasn't really a thing. 
even though I've always been interested, like I said, in accents and languages and culture, it is something that has always interested me and is very natural to me, but I never made it a thing until I was in high school, which we will talk about in most likely part two. I can't wait to do it. So if you guys want to know certain things about my high school experience or my teenage experience and why this moment in my life was so impactful and beautiful and something that always makes me smile, uh, let me know. And I'm very happy to, to go into deeper details about it. But this video, this episode is really just to focus on my childhood and this sort of just growing up Italian-American in, in my early childhood and what it was like for me. If I were to wrap it all up in a nice little box in a nutshell, it was just normal. And it was normal because everyone else around me was similar. Even if they weren't of an Italian background, they were of some other background that they held to in one way or another. Like I said, we were very Italian in my family, okay? We were very much Italian-American. But, and we still are, but what I'm saying is like, because it was never a thing and you you felt the sense of Italian, but you were also very much American, like you never felt different from kids you'd watch on TV or something. It just wasn't a thing. It was just a fact of life, you know? Um, but anyway, there are some fun stories that I have of when I was a kid, particularly like really young, like really young. There was a time, and I mentioned this on one of my Instagram lives, I was teaching Italian to like a group of kids when I was like seven years old, I remember. Because um, there was always a consciousness of language, even though I couldn't necessarily articulate it very well. Like I knew that mamma mia was Italian, but yet again, that's, that's, that's like an American cultural thing. Like when people think of Italian, if they don't know much about it, they'll say mamma mia, right? They know manja or pasta, pizza. There are certain things or capisce, you know, capisce, capisci. The verb capire, there's certain things that people know. And so it's really fascinating to me how when I think about it, I wish I had a clearer memory but how was it that at seven years of age, even though all of this was so normal to me, how did I still have the consciousness to say, hey, guys, this is what mamma mia means? Like, how does that happen? And that's such a curious phenomenon, but it's fascinating, you know? I really, and it's about me, but it's like I can think about it in a way because you never make a big deal of it. Non ci fai mai caso. You're just sort of like, what was that, man? That's, that's pretty rad, you know? That's pretty awesome. So yeah, there are moments when the language came up even at other points in time, but these are sort of the two main hallmark things I wanted to bring up where sort of my schooling was teaching me about this stuff. And uh, and yeah, so I can't wait to talk about when I was in high school. So we'll try to go through my life in some stages like this. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I think pretty much I did a, a pretty balanced 25 and 25 minutes. I'm not bad. Wow. I'm getting good at this live streaming stuff, guys. I mean, I've been doing it for a while, but like doing it like this, I'm going to give myself a little friendly pat on the back. <laughs> it's important, guys. Words of affirmation, okay? We need some more of that, don't we? Because you can never have enough. Allora, ragazzi, questo è tutto per il video. Spero molto che vi sia piaciuto. Uh, mi sono divertito tantissimo. Io adoro parlare di queste cose. Um, e quindi sì, io voglio leggere adesso alcuni commenti nella chat e poi concluderò questa live. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I am really looking forward to reading your comments. Uh, I'm going to read through some of the chat now, but this video is pretty much all done for the main topic of today. I can't wait to do part two and, and do more and more episodes. Um, but yeah, this is like a lot of fun for me, guys. I really, really enjoy this. I, I'm really enjoying exploring these ideas. And so I'm really looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. I really want to learn about your experiences. Please feel free to DM me. Please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section if you're comfortable with leaving a public comment. But, um, but yeah, I'd love to learn from you guys because that is, this is really how we understand these things, right? It's all about an exchange of ideas and sharing our lived experiences. And I'm, I'm really sure that my lived experience is not some kind of unique one-off situation. I'm sure there are many, many people out there, many of you guys, who have had very similar experiences in one way or another. So please share with me. I, I love learning this stuff. It keeps me more informed and more aware of what's going on in the world. So... So yes. So let me take a look at some of your comments here. Uh, oh my goodness, you've been following me since 2013, Scarly. Grazie mille. Wow. Grande. Grazie mille per il tuo commento. Grazie mille. Grande. Oh, thank you. Windhammer said my accent's superb. Wow, it's very nice of you. Thank you. And uh, Joselito or Joselito, 
hai, hai iniziato a guardare i miei video due anni fa, grande, grazie, hello to you Anthony, I'm doing very well, excellent, fantastico, molto interessante la storia dei tuoi parenti italiani, grande, very nice, wow, that's great, Lucas wanted to know if I give private lessons, I do, you can always feel free to email me, Uh, my maternal grandmother came from Italy. I don't know my grandfather. She spoke an Italian dialect. Yeah. You know, Lolly Lolly, many Italians went to France. And, and perhaps this could be an episode also. I have had the opportunity, thanks to learning other languages, to learn so much about the Italian communities in other countries, particularly France and Belgium. I've had the up and Canada. I've had the opportunity to learn about those through French. Really cool, man. And there's so many similarities. It's fascinating. It's like there are so many things that I think, yet again, like I always say, so many things we take for granted that we think are isolated, but they're not. There's so many things about the Italian-American experience and identity that I think it's because we talk so much about it. There's so many films on it, you know? That's another topic, too. Let's talk about how media influences culture and people's perception, you know, both in and outside of those groups. Um, that's a fascinating topic. I touched on it a little bit in my Instagram live of yesterday, if you guys would like to watch it. Um, but yeah, it's like, you think something is only Italian American. It's like, no, I, I knew these people that were of Italian descent in Belgium. Okay. And I say in Belgium as if I'm surprised because like, I didn't know Italians went to Belgium. See how much we don't know. That's why we need to talk about this. And like the way they behaved was so much like Italian Americans. I just said, As we say in Portuguese, nossa, like, mamma mia, like, whoa, there's so many similarities. It's incredible, man. It's incredible. Uh, que interessante la tua storia. Grazie per condividere. Thank you, Jiwoon. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So glad to have bumped into you again. Discovered you about seven years ago. Wow. Miss most of the live, but can't wait to watch it. Yeah, please feel free to watch it. Let me know what you think. Thanks for coming back. Happy to have you. Wow, that's amazing. Oh, this is a very good question. I'll touch on this. Quindi non avevi tipo di grande Italian pride quando eri piccolo perché non era a thing per te o no? Uh, I'll answer you first in English if you don't mind. Um, I will tell you this. I The reason why I didn't have this really huge Italian pride is because I didn't know that it was a thing. It was just a normal aspect of life. So because it was always present, Though, looking back, I see that my childhood, yeah, it was very Italian. It was very Italian-American. But that felt normal based on my community and everyone else I was around and even things I'd watch on TV. Like, I remember there was this Nickelodeon show. Um, let me know if you guys watched it too, but I loved it. It was called Taina. I think it was only a one-season show. And it was about this girl from New York who wanted to be a singer. She wanted to be, like, famous and a superstar. And she came from, I don't know if it was supposed to be a Puerto Rican family. I really can't remember. But I know that it was a, a Spanish-speaking family. And I love the show for the cultural aspect of it. That's another thing I should talk about, the Spanish influence on Italian communities and the how that sort of made a lot of Italians feel comfortable and at home through a similar language and cultural aspects. That's a really cool thing to mention. I have personal experience with that. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, there, this is why this is a series. There's so many things to say. But when I saw her family dynamic with her abuelo and her abuela and her family and how she'd call them abuelo and abuela, I always called my grandparents by Italian names too. You know, I didn't call them like, I've never said grandma, you know what I mean? I mean, I've said it before, but... Like, I, I don't know my grandmother as grandma, you know? Not that there's anything wrong with knowing your grandmother as grandma, but I, I never did. I never have. And so I really resonated with someone that didn't have Italian origins. So for me, it was, it, as a very young child, in high school it all changed, but as a young child, I never had this sort of forte appartenenza alla mia identità italiana o italo-americana perché era normale e io vedevo altri ragazzi così. Quindi, look at me, going right into Italian without even realizing it. This happens all the time, guys. Um, quindi sì, per ricapitolare in italiano, sì, ero molto orgoglioso di essere italo-americano e ancora lo sono, però io, mi è piaciuto tantissimo un programma televisivo che si chiamava Taina, era solo una stagione. Se alcuni di voi um, conoscono quel programma, fatemi sapere, mi è piaciuto tanto da piccolo, forse quando avevo tipo otto anni, sette anni. 
Eh, mi ricordo che parlava di una ragazza che aveva una famiglia ehm, eh, latinoamericana, cioè forse era portoricana, però non mi ricordo. E quindi lei chiamava i suoi nonni abuelo e abuela, e quindi era anche sempre così per me. Ho sempre detto nonna, non ho mai detto grandma in inglese. Quindi io potevo trovarmi anche in altre persone che non avevano niente a che fare con l'italianità o con un'identità italiana. Quindi sì, è certo che ero orgoglioso e ancora lo sono, ma non era una cosa come quel mio compagno di classe che ti faceva sapere ogni volta che lo incontravi che, che lui era italiano, ok? Io perché mi, mi sono detto, ma è una cosa così normale come, se, come il cielo è blu, <ride> è così normale. Quindi sì. All right, guys, that's a really great question. Thank you very much, Ji Woon, for asking it. That was a really great question. Thank you guys very much. I really appreciate you. I'm really looking forward to hearing your comments, your DMs, what have you, whatever you guys like. Um, really looking forward to the next puntata. It's going to be a great one. I hope you guys like this one. I really enjoyed it. And that is going to be it for me, guys. So I'm going to finish up my tea, which is a little cold. <laughs> Lukewarm tea after an hour. Uh, that's it, guys. Always remember to spread the love, and I can't wait to see you guys next time. Ciao, ciao, ragazzi. Ciao, ciao.